the crack guys welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you my reading plans for march usually i don't do this type of video because i pretty much just wing it when it comes to what books i read in a month i just go with the flow i just go with whatever my mood is at the time but every so often i like to plan what i want to read in a month previously i've done my tbr out of a mug where i put all my unread books into a mug and just pick them out and then last May I did a fangirl reading month of where I read all the fangirly books like the Star Trek books. I read a couple of Catherine Hepburn biographies and I read Kate Mulgrew's second memoir which was the whole reason why I did like a fangirl reading month. So for March I actually want to focus in on one particular person and that is Amelia Fox. Now I've mentioned Amelia a couple of times on my channel. Then in January it twigged to me that I actually have quite a few books that I can dedicate time to, I can probably dedicate a month to, that are specific to Amelia Fox. That's what my TBR is going to be for March. They're all going to be Amelia Fox related books and then at the end I'm going to share some books with you. If you're also a fan of Amelia Fox I will share with you some other books that I have previously read that I can recommend to you and some books that I don't personally have right now but I might want to read later on. So without further ado let's just get started. First and foremost I plan to get to Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I don't really need to go into great detail about what Pride and Prejudice is about. Everybody knows what Pride and Prejudice is about but how does it relate to Amelia Fox? If you've heard about the adaptation with Colin Firth you might not realize that Amelia Fox was in it. She played Georgiana Darcy, who is Mr. Darcy's younger sister. It was actually one of her first roles ever. Apparently, according to the trivia on IMDb, the casting directors had been looking up and down for an actress that could play Georgiana, who could play piano and could look innocent enough because Georgiana is quite sheltered but they couldn't find one in particular. So Amelia's mother, Joanna David, was actually in Pride and Prejudice as well as Mrs. Gardner. And they saw Amelia and they were like, can we use her? Would she like to play Georgiana? And Amelia had no aspirations of being an actress, despite the fact being in the Fox dynasty, the Fox acting dynasty. She had no delusions about becoming an actress and she fell into it and has had a very very successful career since and so this book pretty much launched her career. I've never had to read it ever despite the fact I have an English degree. It's the only Jane Austen book I've ever read is Persuasion and I'm very excited to finally get to this. If Amelia Fox does not convince me to read something like Pride and Prejudice then nothing will. Another adaptation that Amelia Fox was in was Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. She starred as the second Mrs. de Winter alongside Charles Dance. Rebecca follows the second Mrs. de Winter and she moves in with Mr. de Winter. And in every corner of the house that she moves into, she's reminded of his first wife, Rebecca, and how much she does not know about her new husband. So very interested to get to this. This is actually my second copy of Rebecca because I have a, another one that I did not read but I just wanted this one because you know I like pretty covers and I thought that might entice me to read it. And of course you know somebody like Amelia Fox deserves you know like pretty editions. The next two books are probably the most ambitious that I have for my reading plans for March because they are like breeze blocks of books. Grammar where the hell are you? But these focus on her character of Morgose who she played in the BBC's television series The Adventures of Merlin. Morgose was pretty much how I got to become a fan of Amelia. I had heard of her through her work in Silent Witness and I had tried to watch Silent Witness but I always find something else that was on that I was like oh I'll watch that instead. Now I never miss Silent Witness, I rewatch it all the time. But Morgose was that gateway drug. I loved her in the television series, she is my favourite character, I am very salty about what happened to Morgos, but we're going to move on. So I have two King Arthur related books. So first I have The Queen of Camelot by Nancy Mackenzie, if you can see that, and The Once and Future King by T.H. White, which is a bind up of all 
of these stories. So in this we have the sword and stone, the witch in the wood, the ill-made knight, the candle in the wind and the book of Merlin. This sucker is 845 pages long. I don't think I will be able to read the entirety of this. I might do. Who knows? I might surprise myself. But if I don't get to them, it's it's fine. This is the tale of King Arthur and his shining Camelot, of Merlin and Owl and Guinevere, of beasts who talk and men who fly, of knights, wizardry and war. It is a book of all things lost and wonderful and sad, the masterpiece of fantasy by which all others are judged. I, I laugh that J.K. Rowling has blurbed it, Harry's spiritual ancestor. Okay. I have really no idea what the plotline of The Once of Future King is. All I know is that it is King Arthur. I don't think The Sword in the Stone is like the Disney movie. I have no, I'm under no illusions that it will be, but I know that Morgos features in this because I remember looking it up like books that feature Morgos and this came up. She might be in the second story. I don't know. I will have to find out. And then The Queen of Camelot by Nancy McKenzie. Again, this came up on the, the Google search that I did to see what books have more goes in it. So, on the night of Guinevere's birth, a wise woman declares a prophecy of doom for the child. She will be Guinevere, the white shadow, destined to betray her king and be herself betrayed. She is entranced by the tales of the valorous Arthur, a courageous warrior who seems to Guinevere no mere man but a legend. Then she finds her herself betrothed to him and like the knights that follow him, swiftly falls under Arthur's spell. At the sight of King Arthur, Guinevere reigns strong and true, yet she soon learns how the dark prophecy will reveal itself. She is unable to conceive. Arthur's only true heir is Mordred, offspring of a cursed encounter with the witch Morgos. Now Guinevere makes the faithful choice to raise the child as her own, to teach him to be a ruler and to honour Camelot. Mordred will be her greatest joy and the key to her ultimate downfall. With any King Arthur legend or retelling, they always change who Mordred is from. He's always Arthur's son, but they never can agree on who actually gave birth to him, whether it was Morgan slash Morgana or Morgos. Sometimes they have it as Morgos, but like they, they are half siblings, Arthur and Morgos, but they don't realize that until much later on. So who knows if I might like this or not, but it has Morgos and I really just want to read books about her. Usually I'm very salty when it comes to books that have Morgos because she ultimately dies. I'm just salty. I hate it when she dies because obviously I'm seeing Amelia Fox in the role. These two are breeze blocks compared to the other ones, but as I said, I might get to them. I might not, but they are there. I will want to get to them ultimately. I also have three audiobooks that I want to listen to. The first one is one that I am almost finished. I started listening to it last week and that is Agnes Grey by Anne Bronte. This follows the character of Agnes Grey who is born into quite an affluent family but when they fall on hard times she volunteers herself to become a governess so that she can get some money to send back to her family and help pay her father's medical expenses and things like that but she becomes a governess for you know families that are higher up in society think Downton Abbey but the children are little shitholes they are the worst children ever they are so arrogant and so conceited and so privileged and entitled and I am pretty much just listening to this audiobook because Amelia is the narrator and it is boring me to Years, I am sorry to say. But nevertheless, it's on my reading plans for March and thankfully I'm almost finished it. The second audiobook that I have on my reading plans is Death Comes as the End by Agatha Christie. Um, I've never read anything by Agatha Christie before. I do own Murder on the Orient Express because the movie had just come out and I was wanting to read the book before getting to the movie. Neither of those happened. Death Comes as the End. It was 
quite cheap on Audible, so I, I just went for it. Imhotep, wealthy landowner and priest of Thebes, has outraged his sons and daughters by bringing a beautiful concubine into their fold. And the manipulative Nofret has already set about a plan to usurp her rival's rightful legacies. When her lifeless body is discovered at the foot of a cliff, Imhotep's own flesh and blood become the apparent conspirators in her shocking murder. But vengeance and greed may not be the only motives. I can't really say anything about my excitement for reading this, except that Amelia does the audiobook, she's a narrator, and that's pretty much why it's on this list. And the last audiobook that I want to listen to in March is The Wreckage by Robin Morgan Bentley. Again, Amelia does the narration for this, but she's one of three narrators in this audiobook. She's uh, she's paired with Jack Hawkins and Copna Hall Holdbrook Smith. Probably butchered that. The summary of this is things will never be the same again. Ben is driving on the motorway on his usual commute to the school where he works. A day like any other except for Adam, who in a last despairing act jumps in front of Ben's car and in killing himself turns the teacher's world upside down. Racked with guilt and desperate to clear his conscience, Ben develops a friendship with Alice, Adam's widow, and her seven-year-old son, Max. I'm assuming Amelia does the chapter perspectives for Alice. But as he tries to escape the trauma of the wreckage, could Ben go too far in trying to make amends? Sounds interesting. Definitely not something that I usually would listen to. It seems to be a bit of like a thriller kind of book, which usually I am not that into, but nevertheless, it's on this TBR for a reason, and that's because Amelia Fox is involved in it, and I would listen to her just read the phone book because she's incredible. Like, honestly, she is one of my favorite audiobook narrators out there. So that's all of the books that I want to potentially read or listen to throughout March. As I said at the beginning of the video, this is the part where then I recommend some books to you. If you are a fan of Amelia's and you want to read books that she has been part of an adaptation for or she's done the audiobook for, she has quite the extensive audiobook library. Um, far too many for me to talk about. And even some of them that I personally do not want to um, listen to because they're like Sophie Kinsella or Peter Rabbit or things like that. They're, they're just not worth um, an audible credit, in my opinion. So I'm going to talk about some books that I have already read and I'll tell you how she is involved in it. The first one is A Ballet Shoes by Noel Striffield. Why is that such a tongue twister right now? About 10 years ago she was part of a BBC adaptation starring Emma Watson and Victoria Wood. Amelia played the character of Garney aka Sylvia Brown. In Ballet Shoes it follows the Fossil Sisters who are adopted by great uncle Malcolm I think his name is. They call him Gum. He picks up these three girls all throughout the world, Pauline, Petrova and Posey, on his adventures around the world and then he sends them home to Sylvia to raise. To make ends meet, um, the children end up becoming entertainers as young children and they enter into a school for that kind of training for acting, singing, dancing, whatever. It's a very lovely story. It's very lovely. I will say if you've ever watched the adaptation with Amelia, do not expect Sylvia to have the love interest that she does in it because um, she does not. The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. She was in an adaptation of this with Ben Barnes and Colin Firth. She played Colin Firth's character's wife. That was why I read the book in the first place. I had no desire to read The Picture of Dorian Gray in my life previously. Still don't have much of a desire to read it again. I read it, didn't really like it. I might like it now that I'm older, but when I was reading it, I was like 21. Did not like it, was not a fan of it. But nevertheless, I read it because Amelia was in an adaptation of it. If you don't know what A Picture of Dorian Gray is about, it is about Dorian Gray, who is a very conceited man and he is obsessed with growing older and not growing older and keeping his youthful charm and beautiful face. Somehow, I can't remember how, this portrait 
was painted of him. And so whenever he has these disgusting emotions that potentially age you, they end up on the painting. He never grows a day older, but his painting does, and it becomes this grotesque and ugly thing um, by the end. So that's pretty much all that's about. She was also in an adaptation of David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. She actually played Daniel Radcliffe's mother when he was in the adaptation of it. So there you go. That's an excuse to read David Copperfield, or at least the first little section of it. And now for some audiobook recommendations. I have three of them, starting with my favourite, and that is Jack Dawes by Ken Follett. I went into this book knowing nothing about it. I needed an audiobook for a shift. This was one that grabbed my attention whenever I read the synopsis. It is incredible. It is an historical fiction centred during World War II and it follows a character called Flick Claret and she is a member of like the French resistance and she and six other women are charged with taking down a telephone exchange in Saint-Cécile I think it's called but there are Nazis on their trail everything is in their way and it is just an incredible incredible story the audiobook is stunning. Amelia has does the biggest range of accents that I have ever encountered with her when it comes to an audiobook. She does several French accents, several German accents, like about a dozen British ones. You never need to be told who is talking. You just know by the accent that she has on who is talking. She does an amazing an amazing job with this audiobook. You know she does an amazing job with the audiobook when I buy the book. That's when you know I love the audiobook. Another audiobook that she nailed but I haven't gotten around to buying it yet is Melmoth by Sarah Perry. Melmoth was one of the books that I had my eye on for a while mostly because the cover is blue. I love blue, it's my favourite colour. and It just like seemed very intriguing to me. Can't re even really describe what Melmoth is about without looking up Goodreads. Hang on we'll do that. For centuries, the mysterious dark-robed figure has roamed the globe, <coughs> searching for those whose simplicity and cowardice have fed into the rapids of history's darkest waters, and now it is heading in our direction. It has been years since Helen Franklin left England. In Prague, working as a translator, she has found a home of sorts, or at least refuge. That changes when her friend Carell discovers a mysterious letter in the, in the library. A strange confession and a curious warning that speaks of Melmoth the Witness, a dark legend found in obscure fairy tales and antique village lore. As such superstition has it, Melmoth travels through the ages, dooming those she persuades to join her to a damnation of timeless itiner itinerant the fuck? solitude. To Helen it all seems the stuff of unlightened fantasy, but unaware as she wanders the cobblestone streets, Helen is being watched and then Corel disappears. I got lost in this audiobook. I really did. Can't remember a lot of it. I just know that it went through several different times of history and however Melmoth becomes part of that history, it is just wonderful. And the last audiobook that I have to recommend is Labyrinth by Kate Moss. I have had this audiobook on my audible shelves for years and never listened to it until January. Labyrinth follows two timelines. There's the one in the past where you're in Carcassonne and you're following Alais who's like this princess and then you come to the future and you're following Alice who is volunteering to help with this archaeological dig and she finds this ring with a labyrinth in it and then everything unfolds from there. It is a brilliant story. I really loved it. I actually have the book which is lost in my shelves somewhere. I bought it because Katie McGrath who played Morgana in Merlin and she was playing Oriana and then Amelia did the subsequent audiobook. Both my girls in one fell swoop, two birds, one stone. Love it. And this is a dual narrator partnership. Amelia does the present day and then the other fella does the past. I can't remember the name of the other narrator. And if you like Philippa Gregory books, then Amelia does a, a, a few of those. I listened to The Other Boleyn Girl and The White Queen, I think it's called. They were fine. She did a great job with the narration. 
I just didn't like the stories. They're, they're just not up my alley. But there you have it guys. Those are all of the reading plans that I have for March. I know it is quite ambitious, especially with the two breeze blocks of books that I have sitting, staring at me right now. I'm not scared. <laughs> so let me know if any of these pique your interest. Are you a fan of Amelia Fox? What is your favorite role? Do you want to read any of these books along with me? Let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you in my next video. Bye! Thank you.